oh boy, there's another new browser. I know you guys didn't love my coverage of the last video I did like this, but this one's gonna be a bit different because I actually see a lot of really cool potential with Zen Browser. So what is Zen Browser? Let's take a look because this isn't just a beautiful homepage. It actually seems quite cool. And you know what? While we go over this, I'm gonna install it because I'm actually quite curious what using this is like. I have an install guide. Hopefully I won't need that. Zen and Zed, that's gonna be fun. Let's open up Zen. <laughs> Good start. Bypass gatekeeper. Very good sign. Signing applications is hard, I get it. Cool. So now we have Zen Browser. It's already looking promising so far. Let's get started. Fast, beautiful, and private. Choose the color theme. I won't light mode because y'all get too mad at me. I will purple it though, because I like purple. You can import your data. I'm not going to do that. Choose search. Why would you want eBay as your default search engine? What? Do they like pay for that or something? I, I'm confused why you would want eBay as your default search. Is that just to have more options? DuckDuckGo is my search of choice because you can use the bang system to search on things like Google Images, like doing exclamation point GI. And now we're looking at corgis on Google Images. Also of note, the browser is really fast, unlike other browsers that we've recently covered. There's a reason for that. This browser is using existing browser engines. If we go to the Zen browser GitHub, we can learn a lot more about the project. Their focus is building with performance in mind. They've optimized the browser to be as fast as possible. They even have performance benchmarks. Let's take a look at these. I have different hotkeys bound in my browser of choice arc and I'll have to rebind them here. Is there a way to expand and collapse the tab bar here? Oh, is it that? Oh, oh yeah, that's way better. Cool. Now this is just Firefox based arc and open source. I thought they would compare the performance to other browsers here, which they're not doing. Zen's default preferences are based on better Fox, which I believe is, yeah, it's a user JS file for Firefox to fix a bunch of its default configuration stuff. This is kind of like a really, really fancy skin on Firefox. On a lower level, it's, it's much deeper than that. But the, for the layman to understand what's going on here, Zen browser is to Firefox what something like Edge or Arc is to Chrome, where it's built on top of that same base and has configured a bunch of things within it for you, which I think is actually really cool. I want to configure some things. So the first thing is I need to change some shortcuts. Is there a... Um, I don't ever want notifications for my browser. Does anybody actually have browser notifications on? I feel like it's the worst thing ever. Control, Shift, P. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Toggle sidebar. The command I want for that for sure. Cool, I set that. It does not work. Oh, compact mode sidebar. Ah. That does it. Cool. It's like, is that an annoyance? Sure, but that's the type of annoyance that can be fixed relatively trivially. It's not like the browser performs terribly. It's just that the hotkeys that I'm used to were in weird places to bind. And knowing what compact mode is versus all these other things, it's just new language, all things that could be cleaned up in the future. Does it let you put the sidebar on the right? That's actually a really good question. If it does, that'll make me very happy. Uh, I don't think you can. Oh, this is really nice. You can set up a proxy or a VPN directly inside of the browser so your browser can connect to the internet differently from how the rest of your computer does. It's a niche feature, but it's really nice if you happen to need it. There's a lot of stuff in here that I'm honestly pretty impressed with. I have the top bar as well in compact mode. Oh yes, now we're talking. Now we're just replicating arc. I don't think you can get the URL any other way though. Yeah, I must have broke something where this is blocking shit. I'm gonna close and reopen. Okay. I don't know what I changed that means that this is working when it wasn't before, but it is. Cool. Had to play with the settings a bunch, but it's working now. These are all things that are easy enough to smooth out. This isn't like fundamental failures in the browser so much as it's brand new and figuring out what buttons should go where is challenging and how to name all of these things and deal with them is not easy, but it's in a really good state overall. The browser flies. I bet we can go to my stream right now and it plays back totally fine. Hi me. It's going to be an infinite recursive. Theo here in a second. But yeah, since it's based on Firefox, it's insanely customizable. It's like a deeply customized Firefox, which more and more feels necessary as Firefox gets weirder and weirder as days go by. 
I like the idea of this as a high quality Firefox wrapper. Let's hear more from them though, because I can sit here and play with it all day. We should actually learn more about the browser. The only limits your imagination. Zen's theme store offers a wide range of themes to customize your browsing experience. Try them out today. Uh, what's happening there? The page just slowly started moving. Does it do that in other browsers? Let me grab the URL and try it in Arc and see if it does the same thing. So we were here and it just randomly got pushed down. Appears to have only happened in this browser. <laughs> Is it happening again? It's not. I have no idea why that happened. Just this element got moved down a whole bunch randomly. So what does it offer? Split views, horizontal splits, and grid layouts. Oh, yes. If you know my complaints about Arc, it's that I love the split view here, but I can't do anything. If I want to put a different thing in like the top right here where I am, like another widget, I can't. There's literally no way to in Arc. You can only do a vertical split. You cannot do a horizontal one. So having not just horizontal splits, but grid layout fully, that's super cool. We also got workspaces, which is, again, one of the coolest parts of Arc. I have three different workspaces here. I have my work one. I have my content like content management one. And I have my stream profile that has things very limited here. Having that in Firefox is huge, especially built in this well. I know Firefox has their equivalent of like workspaces, but it's much closer to Google's where it's expecting you to have different browsers open for each one. Like if I open up Chrome, I have person one, which is my main, and then I have spyware, which is me dicking around with some stuff. But each of these is their own Chrome instance. And if I want to have a different Chrome profile here, it opens up another Chrome window. So now I have this one signed in with Theo and this one signed in with Alt, but I can't easily navigate between them. They all exist in their own windows and in their own worlds. Having this built in is awesome. Yeah, and being able to switch between them really easily as well, huge. Side panels are very interesting. I actually didn't like this feature too much as it was implemented in Arc. I actually turned off all the weird preview stuff because I found it very annoying. Also, does this website have this weird wrapping on here too? Yeah, the padding on the site is really off just in general. It might be because I'm on such a small screen. Like if I zoom out, will it fix it? Yeah. Okay, so the site looked really weird because I was on a 720p effective resolution but it should look a lot better like this. If this wasn't an open source independent project, I'd probably rail on them a bit more for that, but their focus is entirely on the feature set and the customization of effectively Firefox. Really cool stuff. I could see this being huge actually, honestly. I'm curious about the theme store, because this is, for those of us who have been around for a while, you might remember the good old days of Chrome themes. Was it you Embed that was still running the Obama theme? Or was it a Firefox theme? So it was this one. Yeah, I saw somebody. Yeah, uh, Embed from Stream, for those who don't know, she helps out with a bunch of the stuff that we do. Also is a god weird speedrunner. And she uses Firefox with the original Obama Stars and Stripes theme. I miss the days of this type of like quirky theming. I totally understand why it's not a thing anymore, but I do miss it. And the idea of more customization and a store to browse that customization, it's actually really cool. Ooh, hide tab mute. It hides the mute unmute button when the sidebar is collapsed to make clicking on tabs easier. I like that you can do that level of customization with the themes. Theming in other browsers is like, you can change the colors. Oh, change the viewport roundness. Okay. So here, this corner is rounded. But if I reinstall this, yeah, as soon as I click that, it goes away. That's actually super subtle and cool. Uninstall, it's rounded. Install. That's crazy, actually that you can fundamentally change the behavior of your browser at that level with a one click, that's actually dope. I've never seen this. I've never seen that level of like customization via install. Okay, you've sold me, I'm interested. So this is the real reason to build a new open source browser. If your goal is to just be the alternative to whatever and you don't have an objective beyond that, you're wasting everyone's time. If your goal is to enable specific features, behaviors, and implementations that don't exist in the solutions that currently are out, like is happening here, that's awesome. It's clear that Zen's goal isn't just be an open source alternative to Chrome, it's building something different. And I'm getting excited, even though I'm not a Firefox guy. I'm really not a Firefox guy. God, the AV layer in Firefox is, is garbage, but this is really cool.
Apparently, it also increases performance because it relies on less GPU resources to render the clip path that Zen uses to create the rounded corners. That's really cool. And we can even look at it on GitHub to see how they do it. Aha, disable web view corners, Chrome CSS. That's cool. First off, it's funny that the CSS file for the Firefox-based Zen browser to do the theming is named chrome.css. Is theme.json link to that file? Yeah, it does. Okay. So it didn't need to be named that, but they chose to, which is really funny. That's cool that you can just do a CSS thing like that. And now I can install custom CSS that doesn't just customize like the color of things. It actually fundamentally changes how the browser looks with one click. That's dope. That's really cool. In a browser, the Chrome is any visible aspect of a browser aside from the web page themselves. This is not to be confused with the Google Chrome browser. That's hilarious. <laughs> Today I learned another good point. I didn't even think to say this because it, it feels obvious, but it's actually not. You can install multiple themes, which is a big deal because in other browsers, you have your theme for the browser. In this browser, themes are more like extensions where you can stack them and add multiple of them, which is super cool. So we have the disable rounded corners here. If we wanted more, like we wanted the new color scheme, we can install that. That actually looks a lot better. I like that quite a bit. Compact sidebar, allow the sidebar to take up even less space. Reduces the minimum width while well, expanded reduces the height of tabs. I don't know if this one's working. Apparently you can configure it in the settings page. Oh, that's the checkbox for the height. That's really cool. That's really cool. This is, this is the real benefit of open source. When you make it not just easy to contribute to the code base, but you make it easy to contribute extensions of the user experience. This is why VS Code won, because they made it so easy to make changes to the editor, not by learning the whole VS Code code base, but by making extensions with simple languages like JavaScript to make your experience in VS Code better. Zen is going in that direction. They're taking a lot of the learnings that we have from browsers like what I'm using here with Arc, and they're applying them in a way that is much more open by nature. It's not just open in the sense that the code is there, it's open in the sense that the whole browser is being built to be torn apart and rebuilt by the users how they want to use it. This is delivering on what I felt like was the original promise for Firefox, and I'm actually really excited by this the more I'm seeing it. There's a few small tweaks to the toolbar. You center it, hide bookmarks or folder icons. You can expand the toolbar on hover or search. Very cool. The fact that there are this many huge changes, like any one of these things is not able to be done in Arc. The fact that I can't even change what side the Arc sidebar renders on is obnoxious. The fact that I can't change, here's a fun one. There's a hotkey to enable and disable the URL bar. But when you have a split view, it always shows the URLs. Split view is the one place I actually don't often want to see the URL bar, and that's obnoxious. You can customize those things here. And there's also a whole open source community of people working on it. So if you can get others interested in the things you want to change, you can make real shit happen here. This is the most promising new browser I've seen in a minute. I honestly think the biggest hurdle that they're going to have to get over is that they're using Firefox as the base instead of Chromium. But as long as the Firefox engine continues to improve, this is set for some really, really solid success. I am pumped about this. How do I know Zen is safe? Zen browsers designed with a focus on security and privacy. Additionally, the browser's code base is derived from Firefox, which is a well-known and trusted open source project. Users can verify the safety of the browser by reviewing the source code available on GitHub and by noting that it has been tested and certified as a free virus and malware by various antivirus programs. Bit of a reach. People don't actually read the source code looking for exploits. Then there are plenty of exploits that sneak through code review. Look at all the chaos that happened with the, um, what was the massive encryption one, the Linux one that we all flipped out about earlier this year? XZ, thank you guys. As always, chat carrying me. Thank y'all. Yeah, XZ can get through code review. A lot of sketchy stuff can, but the fact that this is a big open source project that's based on Firefox and any diff between it and Firefox will be analyzed heavily means it's probably going to be safe. But the fact that I just had to disable like checks for my applications to get this running, that's a little sketchier. Obviously, you should give them a star on GitHub. I'm going to go do that right now because they deserve it because this is really cool. Zen browser. Oh, theme store is a different repo. That makes sense now. I'm hitting that star button because 1.7 thousand stars for an actually really promising browser. That's sad. We This needs to do better. I If people are harassing me to use Obsidian instead of Notion, why aren't they harassing me to use Zen instead of Arc? 
Like this has a much clearer value add for so many people. This is really promising. But also, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm joining the VIP role. I want to support this. I want to see these guys succeed. Oh, it's only 23 a month for God level. You know what? We'll go for it. At least I can do. And there we are. I am now a God level donator. I want to put my money where my mouth is. It's the least I can do because I am genuinely really excited with what I'm seeing here. This is not just another browser. This is the most open approach to a browser design I've seen in a while. And it's not fixated on stupid things like let's rewrite everything. It's trying to make a good experience that could be customized to your specific needs and actually looks like a browser from the modern times. Like let's just compare this to Firefox right now. No offense to Mozilla and their designers, but Firefox is one of the ugliest browsers I've ever seen. Like what the hell is going on here? Ooh, there's so much on the screen right now. This is nasty. We'll refresh quick. Start fresh with Firefox because I haven't used it for so long. I didn't tell it to import data. It just did that for me. I did not tell it to import. It's just doing that. Go away. Yeah, like what is going on here? There is so much. Like what does this button even do? Firefox view? Eh? This is just, the Is Pocket built in by default now? I love Pocket. But if that's just built into the browser, that's weird. As like the one Pocket user still. God. God. Yeah. I, I can't do Firefox. I can't. It's it's ugly and it doesn't work with AV stuff. The very least, this is a huge level up there. Interesting. You can switch tabs by scrolling. So if you have the bottom of a page, it goes to the next tab. I would never want that. Oh, hover your mouse over the tab bar and use your mouse wheel to scroll through them. That's kind of cool. There is unique, like, like actually new ideas here. I'm assuming that Arc doesn't do that. Yeah, Arc does not do that. You can just scroll that way here. Huge shout out to the Zen team for putting the work in to make something actually novel and unique and not getting lost in the sauce of reinventing things for the sake of it. I might make this my default browser for a bit and see how I feel about it. Should I do it, boys? Let me know in the comments if I should actually run Zen for a while and see how I feel. It'll be a bit annoying hopping between Zen and Zed and then all my default stuff, but I'm actually quite excited about what they're doing. And if they can make the UX customizable enough to fit my admittedly weird needs, I see no reason why I wouldn't try this out more seriously. Okay, there's one reason, which is WebRTC calls in the browser. But other than that, I'm actually really excited here, and I hope you guys are too. Let me know what you think in the comments, and hopefully I'm not going to get flamed for this one. Until next time, peace nerds.